This lesson is brought to you by Black Mountain Picks. I use my Black Mountain Pick every time I go to play with a thumb pick. It's just super comfortable and it makes it ideal for long practice sessions. And let's face it, if you're trying to tame your thumb, you probably have a lot of those long practice sessions. And the flat pick design makes on the fly switching between thumb picking and flat picking parts feel very natural. The familiar flat pick shape is fantastic for new thumb pickers looking to get in the game. Cole and the team at Black Mountain Picks offer different pick gauges and shapes, including my favorite, the Jazz Tip Pick. And if you're a left-handed player, they got you covered there too. Plus, they recently launched a really cool slide ring with a very novel design. Check out Black Mountain Picks at the link in the description. What's up, BGI? In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to play John Fahey's fantastic tune, Sunflower River Blues. Let's get started with the tuning and the intro. Beyond the amazing picking in this tune, one of the coolest things about it is its tuning. It's in open C. And that gives us some really low pitches here. The sixth string is tuned down all the way to C. We're gonna go through each string here, but do note that if you're trying to play this along with the album, I think it's a little bit sharp of open C. But now let's have a look at how each string is tuned. So the sixth string goes down from E all the way to C. That is really low. Then we've got our fifth string going down from A to G. So that's a full step. Then we go down from D to C on the fourth string. Third string stays the same as standard. It's a G note. And then we go up a half step from B to C here. And then finally, our first string is in E. So that doesn't change either. Here are the six strings. What a cool intro to this song. It's really slow, but we really get inside the sound of this big open C tuning. Now, we strum across all six strings for the most part here, and what we do on the fretboard isn't all that complicated. In fact, in most parts, we just need two fingers on the strings. Just like that little move that happens where I've got my uh, middle and ring finger on the fourth fret of strings five and three, and we just pick up to get that pull off sound. Or we might even slide up to the fifth fret. You'll hear this chord quite a lot as you move through the chords. So we start with this little shape at the fifth fret, then drop down to the fourth fret to our pull off, then we come back up and strong. Strum again, drop down, pull off, pull off again. The open strings. Come back to the fifth fret, do the pull off move, and slide, strum, and then put down the index finger on the fourth fret, then lift it, drop back to the fourth fret, and then back up. And then a full long measure of this holding out as we get ready for section A. Before we tackle the main sections of Sunflower River Blues, I've got a quick tip for you. I'm gonna use my thumb and three finger picking style. But if you favor a different picking style, then take some time and work out the picking. For me, I'm going to a style that really devotes the thumb to string six, five, and four, my index finger to the third string, middle finger, second string, and then finally my ring finger on the first string. That really helps me work out what finger is going to do what ahead of time. But again, if you're playing with a thumb and two finger style, for instance, go ahead and think through how you're gonna approach the parts. That'll keep you from getting tripped up as you start working through these patterns. The 
The next section that we're gonna cover, we're gonna call it section A, and it's where the picking really begins, and it's heavily based on alternating bass, where the thumb goes back and forth between two strings on the beats. One, two, three, four. We're gonna unpack that as we move through three main parts that recur throughout section A. Let's have a look. We're gonna use that shape that we used in the intro and we're gonna shift it down here to the second fret. So I've got my middle finger, second fret, fifth string, and ring finger on the second fret, third string. And what we're gonna do is really start off with our alternating bass going between the fifth string, fourth string, fifth string, fourth string, fifth string, fourth string. Now back it down, fifth string, fourth string. So I just shifted down a half step to the first fret for that last half of a measure. Now what's really cool is, of course, what we hang on top of that bass line. So first off, it's just the beat by itself, just the bass by itself, and then bass, and then we use the index finger to pick the third string, and that's fretted at the second fret. Bass, open second string, bass, which is now the open, and then go back to that third string. So the first measure, Then we've got bass, and we're into the second measure now, and our bass is on the fifth string. And of one open second string, bass. Now here's something really interesting, and this might throw you, but we're going to shift that pattern, or that fingering down right here. We're gonna do it on the and of two. This is not necessarily a common place to change chords, but it really keeps this thing moving. On the and of two, we're gonna drop down and hit the first fret on the third string, right? And then we know our bass went down with it, and that's now fifth string, then open, and then bass, third string, all right? So here are these two parts, and really pay close attention to when I change down to the first fret here. going to kind of finish this idea. We're going to pinch the second string with the open sixth string and then bass, bass. Now in between the two bass notes here, I'm going to hammer back into this shape here, really focusing on hammering the third string, but getting the fifth string in place so that I can use that as my bass before the open second string. The next measure, all open strings, six, four, those are the bass notes on beat, third, back to the six, that's the bass, and then in between the bass, we've got that second string, bass. This is one chunk, so let's put these four measures together and really focus on this. You need to be able to play this confidently because it happens constantly throughout the song. Even in section A, it's gonna repeat, so you're gonna have two times that you've gotta play this through. You really need to know this part. This next part might be one of my favorite parts of the whole entire song. All right, let's take a look at that as our second chunk of section A. This next chunk, we move our bass to the open fifth string and then the second fret on the fourth string. And I'm using that same little shape that I've used throughout this tune so far, but I moved it up to the fourth string and the second string, skipping over the third. We're gonna use that third string open here as we pick through this. All right, let's look at that slowly. So it's bass, pinch, little filler note, bass, little filler note, bass, filler note, right? A little pluck by itself. And this is the cool measure here. We're gonna slide up to the fourth fret, pinching these strings, four and two, and then open, then pinch back down to this string set, the fifth string and the third string. With those open strings worked in there, really cool, check this out. 
So when we put these two together, Now, as far as section A goes, there's really just one more piece of the puzzle, and it's a really cool bit. It's kind of simple in a way, but there's definitely a trick, right? With everything, there's always a trick. This is the trick to this one. It's a slide up on the sixth string from the third fret up to the fourth, and it sounds really cool, especially because this is tuned so low. So let's have a look at what these measures sound like. So coming from our last part, we're going to pinch 6th string and the 5th string, then bass, 3rd string. Now on B3, we're going to start at the 3rd fret 6th string and slide up. And then pick the open 2nd, and then bass, open 3rd string. Alright, really cool. I love that. This is really sparse, but then you throw this bass in there and it provides some really cool contrast. Time. Now we repeat that measure but without that open second string on beat one. Now to put this together we start with our little descending line. And then this next measure is really where we connect into our B section. Here's another tip for you as you tackle this tune, take things slowly. And you're probably gonna hear that advice a lot from instructors and it's good advice, but I don't just mean to learn this at a slow tempo. Approach the entire arrangement with a slow, methodical focus. Focus on just one section at a time and then even divide the section into smaller chunks. That focus will help you get further faster, even if it doesn't seem like it, even if you're just making progress one bar at a time. This next section, our B section, we're going to take a departure from these lower sounds here that we've been picking around so far and we're going to move up pitch and we're going to get this little shape happening around the 4th fret, 2nd string and the 3rd fret, 1st string and play a nice little melody on top of an alternating bass switching between the 6th string and 4th string pretty much the entire time. So the bass is going to plod along 6th string, 4th string, and then on the end of 3, I'm going to plug the 4th string at the 2nd fret. So you can hold this shape on the fretboard here, because for B4, I'm going to pinch the bass along with the 3rd fret on the 1st string, and then back on the end of 4. So the first measure. That's the next beat of the next measure where I pluck the outer two strings, right? And then back to the bass, fourth string, and then another in between with our second string, fourth fret, bass, and then now the high note, the one at the third fret, bass. So we kind of work in between the beats with our melody there for the second measure. Now the next measure, we do this cool little hammer on up to, and you can use whatever finger on the fretboard works for you. I'll work back and forth between sometimes my ring finger and sometimes my little finger, but I'm pinching and then hammering up to the fifth fret. Bass and then back down. The melody is off beat here. Then we do that again. But here, for the end of this measure, we're going to play on the and of four the open third string so that we get this. Now, we start this off with the open second string and just bass. But then we pick this up again And we 
do sneak that in as we're headed back into our section A here. So we're coming down to the second fret on the third string. Here it is. This tune can really be viewed as built upon a few different picking patterns which repeat quite often. So that brings me to my next tip for you. If you notice that some of the sections are particularly difficult for you, then stop, pick a measure that you're struggling with and just drill the picking pattern. Just about every measure of this tune can be used as an excellent exercise to strengthen good finger picking skills. So now let's dive into a really significant variation on the B section. This one's a whole lot of fun. I can't wait to show it to you. There are a couple of important variations on the B section, that high melody. And one really is a slight variation and the other is wildly different. This is the slight variation. All we're doing here differently is reaching up to the sixth fret on the first string as we pinch with the sixth string. We play on the beat as we move back down to the fifth fret and then the third. Fill in with the fourth fret, second string, and then finally bass and the open third. This is where things get wildly different. We're going to come up the fretboard to the seventh and eighth frets, second string and first string. And we're going to move this shape down to the second fret and third fret as well as work in some of the open strings. The melody here is really cool and it's played with a lot of attack. We've got our alternating bass going between the sixth string and fourth string here. And on the second beat, we're gonna hit the top string. Remember, this is the shape that we're using. You may use different fingers, but I've got my index finger on the seventh fret, second string, and ring finger on the eighth fret of the sec uh, first string. So we're going to pinch and then come on the in-between beat there, we're gonna hit the second string. Go back for the bass, first string, bass, second string. All right, practice that little pattern. We're gonna use it a few more times throughout this section. Now what we're gonna do is drop this down a whole step. So two frets to the sixth fret and fifth fret. Pinch with the bass then bass again, now we're at the fourth string, and then come back down, this time to the second and third frets with the sixth string bass, fourth string bass, and open third string. Do that again. But here, instead of the open third string, pluck the open top two strings. Then we repeat. We've got a really cool answer here. You're going to get in this position, any finger will do here, but play the second fret of the second string here. Really cool. Some cool melody happening here and we're really not moving around on the fingerboard at all. We're just pinching with the bass, and then we go back and pinch the open first string with the bass then back to the second string. Again, that's at the second fret here with the uh, by itself. Then bass, open, bass, second string. Then two outer strings together, bass, second string, bass, open first string, bass, second string, but open now. So this is the melody on that picking. Really cool, let's do that one more time. Then that entire part repeats itself, and we're gonna call that the D section. 
Thanks again to Black Mountain for sponsoring this song tutorial. You can pay them a visit at the link in the description. Highly recommend grabbing one of these picks. And if you learned something from this lesson, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel to make sure that you don't miss more song tutorials like this. And if you want to go deeper and really work on your skills as a finger picker, then you can join BGI at the link right over there. I hope to see you inside my BGI. Until then, practice smart and play on.